Okay, so um, solving triangles with the law of sines and the law of cosines. This would cover section 6.1 and 6.2 in the book that's available on my math lab. What does it mean to solve a triangle? So that means finding the lengths of all three sides of a triangle and finding all the measures of all three angles. And we've done this for right triangles and um, right, use trigonometry for that. Obtuse triangles, there's really two types of obtuse triangles. And an obtuse triangle is a triangle that doesn't have a 90 degree angle. We usually call the, in fact, always call the angles by uh, uppercase letters and then the sides opposite the angles are in lowercase letters. The C looks like a C regardless. So one type of obtuse triangle is that there are three angles that are less than 90 degrees and the other type Right. And we use the same letters. This angle is A, this angle is B, the angle at the top is C. Opposite side is A, B, B, and C. And this has two angles less than 90 degrees and one angle, in this case angle C, is bigger than 90 degrees. You can't have more than one angle bigger than 90 degrees because there's only 180 degrees in a triangle. Okay, so there's five sorts of situations we can have in these sorts of, in dealing with these triangles. Um, so side angle angle, if you look at all these things, if we draw a sort of standard triangle, A, B, C, A, B, C. Side angle angle would mean that I've got a side and then these two angles, right? Side, angle, angle. Angle, side, angle means that you've got an angle and then a side and an angle. So the phrasing means that you're sort of going to the next thing. Okay, so how do trig functions help us with these sorts of triangles? Trig functions can give us the law of sines and the law of cosines, which allow us to solve triangles. So the law of sines is this. This is the ratio of the opposite side to the sine of the angle is the same for all three angles. And so why is this true? Well, if I draw a triangle, there's my standard triangle. We'll call this A, B, and C. Um, and that makes this little A, this little B, this little C. And we'll drop this perpendicular here and we'll call that H for the height. So what do we know here? We've got a right triangle. So sine of A is opposite over hypotenuse. So H, which is the opposite, is B times sine of A. But H also equals A times sine of B. Right? H is the opposite for angle B, it's also the opposite for angle A. So what does this tell me? Well, since these are both equal to H, that means B sine A equals A sine B. And now divide both sides by sine A and sine B and you get B over sine B equals A over sine A. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can do the same thing to get C over sine C by just drawing the triangle and dropping the perpendicular, say, from uh, B. Right? If you draw that perpendicular, you can get the relationship between angle A and angle C. So that's the law of sines. The ratio of the opposite side to the angle is the same for all three angles. Law of cosines starts with the same picture, this picture up here. We're going to need the sum formula, which is this. And we'll draw in our picture. Uh, angle A, little a, angle B, side, little b, angle C, side, which should be a capital C, side, little c. And we'll need our height H. That's a right triangle. And we'll call this distance from here 
to here, we'll call that X. Get rid of that C for now. Call this distance Y. And then that makes the entire distance from here to here, we'll call that C. So there we go. So what's the law of cosines? Well, drawing up this triangle gives me a bunch of different stuff. So one thing that I'm going to need is that uh, from the sum formula, what is cosine of pi minus t? And that looks like a difference, but remember that subtraction is the same thing as adding a positive, adding a negative. So I can use the sum formula here. This becomes cosine pi, because I'm taking pi to be s, times cosine of minus t minus sine of pi times sine of minus t. So a couple of things. Sine of pi equals zero. So this whole term will go away. Cosine is even. It tells me that cosine of minus t equals cosine of t. And we know that cosine of pi equals minus one. So putting all that all together gives me cosine of pi minus t equals what? Minus one times cosine t. So that's an important thing to note. We know that um, a, the three angles in a triangle add up to pi. So cosine of a plus b equals cosine of pi minus c equals minus cosine c. So that's a useful thing to keep in mind for uh, dealing with this. What are other useful things that we get from the uh, triangle? We have some trig stuff, as we've noted before. H is equal to its opposite to angle A. So it's equal to B sine A. H is also equal to, because it's opposite angle B, A sine B. X is the adjacent to A, so X is equal to B cosine A, and Y is the adjacent to B, so that's equal to A cosine B. Okay. And then from Pythagoras, we have two right triangles. One's got eight X, H, and B. So X squared plus H squared equals B squared. Or what we're actually gonna need is X squared equals B squared minus H squared. And we have A squared plus Y squared equals H squared. That's dealing with this triangle up here or y squared equals h squared minus a squared. So those are all preliminary things. Okay, so what we want, what is the law of cosines? We wanna know what's c in terms of a and b. If the angle c was a right angle, then we know c squared equals a squared plus b squared. But c might not be a right angle up there at the top, so What's the relationship between C, the sides of a triangle? So what do we know about C? Side C is e, C squared is equal to X plus Y quantity squared because C is equal to X plus Y. That's equal to X squared plus Y squared plus two X Y. Great, but we know what X squared is. That's this. So this is b squared, so c squared is equal to b squared minus h squared. y squared is here, that's, oh, got that backwards. Um, h squared plus a squared 
h squared plus y squared equals a squared or y squared equals a squared minus h squared. Sorry about that. So a squared minus h squared plus 2xy. And 2xy is going to be 2 times x times y. B cosine A, that's x. And then A cosine B, that's y. OK, so reorganize this a little bit. I've got an A squared, a plus a B squared, plus 2AB cosine A cosine B minus 2H squared. Right? So these two h squareds come down here. And we just rewrote this part a little bit. So this is a squared. This is all equal to c squared plus b squared plus 2ab cosine a cosine b. Notice that this is half of the cosine a times cosine b is part of the cosine uh, addition formula minus 2. And I'm going to be a little bit sneaky about writing my h's. I've got two h's here. I'm going to write 1h as b sine a. So h and the other h is a sine b. So what does that allow me to do? c squared equals a squared plus b squared plus 2ab cosine a cosine b minus 2ab sine a sine b. So what's c squared equal to? a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And here now I can factor out the ab out of these two terms. And lo and behold, we have the cosine of the quantity. Oops, that should be a sine. Right, this whole thing in parentheses is plus 2ab cosine of the quantity a plus b. And that's that last identity we had way up at the top, cosine of a plus b is equal to minus cosine c. So cosine a plus b becomes minus cosine c. And that there now is our law of cosines. So the side opposite c is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine c. If c is a right angle, then this term here is 0. So you get the usual Pythagorean theorem. So it's a generalization of the Pythagorean theorem. So given the law of sines, which is that, um, and the law of cosines, which is this thing circled here, we can deal with our five types of triangles. So what's the thing that you have to be careful about when using the law of sines? When using the law of sines, remember that if you pick a particular angle, if you're given a particular sign, so we'll say this is um, A, then there are two angles that give you that particular sign, T and pi minus T. You have to be a little bit careful about which angle do you want for your triangle? And we'll talk about this as we go through it. So what should I look for in a triangle in order to use the law of sines? You need to know a side and its opposite angles. The case side angle angle fits perfectly for this. So, oops, I forgot to put in the picture for this, but the picture that we wanted for this particular case was A equals, oops, Thirty-eight degrees. B is one hundred and two degrees. C we don't know. 
A equals 20, B we don't know, C we don't know. So what we know is A is 20, B is, A is 38 degrees, and B is 102 degrees. And we want to know what's little b, what's little c, what's capital C. What's this angle, what are these two lengths? So, first things first, get angle C. It's 40 degrees because the angles have to add up to, if you add them up, they have to add up to 180. So if you know two angles, you can always find the third angle. So two, now we can use the law of sines. which says that A over sine of A is 20 over sine of 38 degrees. And that's our law of sines ratio, 32.49. Excellent. So B over sine of B has to be equal to 32.49. We know what the angle B is, it's 102. So it tells me that B equals 32.49 times sine of 42 degrees. Whenever you make these calculations, make sure your calculator is in, sorry, B is 102 degrees. Make sure your calculator is in um, radians and not in Is make sure your calculator is in degrees, not in radians. C over sine of C is also equal to 32.49. Each of these ratios have to be equal to the same number. So C is 32.49 times sine of 40 degrees, and that should be 20.88. And so now this is 20.88, which makes sense. A and C are almost the same size, so they should be almost the same length. And then B is 31.78. And we have solved that triangle. Okay. So ASA doesn't immediately fit the law of sines because you know the side between two known angles, but that gives you the third. So here's a, they don't give you the picture, they just give you the data. So you draw the standard picture. This is A, this is B, this is C, this is C, A, B. What do we know? This is 65, this is 65, and C equals 6. But we know that angle C must be 180 minus 65 minus 65. So that's 130, so C must be 50 degrees. Great, so now we know an angle and its opposite side, so we can use the law of sines. What's the ratio that we want? It's C over sine of C, which we know to be six over sine of 50, and that is 7.83. So what's A over sine of A? It's the same thing, 7.83. But well, we know what the angle A is, so that tells us that A equals 7.83 times sine of 65. And so A equals 7.1. Since capital A equals capital B, they're the same angle, that means that A has to also equal little b, and so that's also 7.1. And so now we've figured out that triangle, right? So if you know a side and its opposite, you can always use the law of sines. If you know two angles, you can always figure out the third angle. What about the law of cosines? Well, if you don't have an angle and its opposite side, right? If you can't just use the, um, if you can't just use the, um, Oh, why is my brain shutting down? If you can't just use the law of sines, then you have to use the law of cosines. So again, here's a triangle. They don't tell us exactly what the picture is, but we can put together the picture. You just draw the standard triangle. 
angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. They're telling us that this is five, that this is seven, and this is 42. So we know that this equals five, this equals seven, and this is 42 degrees, but that's set up for the law of cosines, right? Because I know two sides and the angle between them, and that means I can figure out the third side. C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AC. So C squared equals 5 squared plus 7 squared, sorry, 2AB times cosine of C minus 2 times 5 times 7 times cosine of 42 degrees. And if you grind all that out, you get C squared equals 21.98, which tells me that C is a length, so it has to be positive, so it's 4.69. So there's my length. Great, and now I know an angle and its opposite side, so I can use um, the inverse sine. Now, here's where you have to be careful about using the inverse sine. There can be two inverses, right? So if we just go about solving for angles, uh, we don't know which one to use. But we know that angle A has to be less than angle B because side B is bigger than side A. So if any angle is bigger than 90 degrees, it has to be B. So we know that A has to be between zero and 90 degrees, right? Because B has to be the biggest angle because it's got the largest side opposite it. So what we'll do then is we know that C over sine of C is 4.6, Nine divided by sine of 42 degrees, and that's 7.01. Great, so we want to figure out what angle A is. So A over sine of A has to equal the law of sines ratio, which is 7.01. But that means then that A, which is five, over 7.01 should equal sine of A. And so if you use your inverse sig function, inverse sine function, we get that A equals 4.69. Forty-five point four eight degrees. Right, and then angle B has to be one hundred and eighty minus angle A minus angle C, and angle B turns out to be ninety-two point five two. So angle B is ninety-two point five two and angle A is 45.48. So, right, look for the smallest side in this case and find the angle opposite the smallest side, and then that will tell you, and then you don't have to worry about having multiple uh, solutions. So here's one with side, side, side. So basically what we know here, draw a basic triangle, A, B, C. And A is 63, B is 22, and C is 50. So let's see, A is 63, B is 22, and C is 50. So how can we find out what, um, angle 
any of the angles are, but we can use the law of uh, cosines again. So I'm going to start by looking for the smallest angle. In that case, it's angle B is the smallest angle. So the law of cosines, as we wrote it before, involves A, B, and C, but we want to be able to use it in any case. So it's basically opposite squared equals adjacent one squared plus adjacent two squared minus two adjacent one times adjacent two times cosine of angle. So if we look at angle B, right, this is one adjacent, this is another adjacent, and this is the opposite. So 22 squared equals 63 squared plus 50 squared minus 63 times 50 times cosine of B. And so that gives us the uh, equation that we need to solve for cosine B. Um, and if you multiply this all out, Cosine of B should be 5985 over 6300 equals 0.95. And now we can find out B by using the inverse cosine, um, and that's 18.19. Right, so we take an angle between 0 and 90. We know that B has to be between 0 and 90 because it's the smallest angle. So now this is. 18.19. Great. So, what are the other two triangles? What are the other two angles? So, use the law of sines because now we have an angle and its opposite to find the next smallest angle. Because we know there can only be one angle bigger than 180 degrees if there is. Any angle bigger than 180 degrees in this, it'll be angle A. So we'll go after angle C. We know what the ratio is now. It's B over sine B is equal to eight, oops, that's the angle, 22 over sine of 18.19, and that's equal to 70.47. So C over sine of C is equal to 70.47, because that's a common ratio. But we know that little c, the side, is 50. So what does that tell me then? Ooh, running out of space a little bit, but not too much. So, oh, 50 over sine of C. So, 50 over 70.47 has to be equal to sine of C. So C equals the inverse sine of 50 over 70.47. We know we want the angle for that that's between 0 and 90 degrees. And so that gives me 63.38 for C. And finally, what's A? Well, we know 180 minus B minus C has to be equal to A. That's 98.43 degrees. Okay, so we know A turns out to be 98.43 degrees, and C turns out to be 63.38 degrees. So there we go. Right, side, 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 use the law of cosines to get the smallest angle, then use the law of sines to get the next smallest angle, and then use subtraction to get the biggest angle. Now, side, side angle is tricky because there's five possibilities. 
uh, actually one, two, three, four possibilities. So actually right up here, we'll draw our standard triangle. Here's our standard triangle. A, A, B, B, C, C. And suppose you're given side, side angle, this side, this side, and this angle. So what can happen? Well, if B is the side, and then this is just, you know, the x-axis, and here's the angle A. One thing you could have is that A is too short. Right? A isn't actually long enough to give you a triangle, right? Because we need it to reach all the way down. So that's no solution there. Oh, I didn't want that to go all the way down. So you could have a right triangle. That means we've got our length B, we've got our length A. And here A is just long enough to reach the bottom. Either one does that. So that's where an A equals B sine of A. And that'll give me a right triangle. Now, if A is a little bit longer than that, we can actually find two triangles. Here's my X axis, here's my length B, here's A. If A is long enough, I could get one triangle like this, or you could get another triangle like that. So I could have a triangle like that, or I could have a triangle like that. So it's two triangles with the same side length. And so here we need to have A a little bit bigger than this. But we need A to be less than B. All right, so if we have B is here, the angle A is here, and the length A is longer than B, that means we'll get a triangle out here somewhere. You actually do get two triangles, but the other triangle would be over here, and then we wouldn't be using angle A as part of our triangle. We need to have angle A as part of the triangle. So there's three possibilities there, four possibilities. And if we think about how long A is. So if A is in here, between zero and B sine A, we have no solution. If A is exactly equal to this, you get a right triangle. In here, two solutions. And out here, you get one solution. So we have to look at these two numbers, B sine A and B, and we think about what the relationship is between A and B so we can figure this out. So here's a triangle, A equals 20, B equals 15. A equals 20, B equals 15. A equals 40 degrees. We want to know B and C. So A here is bigger than B. There should be one triangle, and in fact, it should look like this is 40 degrees and this is 15, something like that. So this is A, this is 20 equals little a, this equals little b, capital C, capital B, and Let's see. So I know an angle 
and it's opposite, so that means law of sines. Um, a over sine of A equals 20 over sine of 40. And that tells me that I have, oops, with my notes, it's an angle. Um, 20 over sine of 40 is 31.11. Okay. So what's our process here? Um, we know this, we can find the angle B. We know that angle B can't be bigger than angle A. So angle B is gonna be less than uh, 40 degrees, so we don't have to worry about sine issues. B over sine of B has to be equal to B over sine of B is equal to 31.11, because that's the common ratio. So that's 15 over, 15 over sine of B equals 31.11, or sine of B equals 15 over 31.11. So B is the inverse sine of 15 over 31.11, and that is 28.82 degrees. So that tells me what B is. So how do I find C? C is 180. If you know two angles, you can always find a third by subtraction. And that gives me 111.18. So that gives me this angle. Then I can use the law of sines to find little c. c over sine of c equals the common ratio, which is 31.11. So little c equals 31.11 times sine of 111.18. And that is 29. Well, it's 29.00 something. Great. And so now we've solved the triangle. The first thing, though, to do is to classify what is it, right? Where are we looking for this? So solve the triangle with A equals 9.3, B equals 41 and A equals 18 degrees. So what do we want to know about this? We want to know B sine A and, no, oh, I don't need that A there, and B. And we want to know is A in this part, in this part, or in this part? A is 9.3, B is 41. So it's definitely over here. B times sine of A equals 41 times sine of 18 degrees, and 41 times sine of 18 degrees is 12.67. So A is 9.3, so A is in here somewhere, right? It's not as big as 12.67, so there's no solution. Not big enough to have a solution. Okay, what about this one? What kind of triangle is this? Well, it's not sure why I had A and C, but we'll just write these as Bs. So A is 16, we wanna know what is B Okay, so this actually should be angle A. Ooh, that's really unexpected. There we go. So this should be angle A here. Great. 
Great. So what's B times sine of A? What's B? B is actually 18. B times sine of A in this case is equals to 15.58. Oh. 15.58 is what B times sine of A is. So A is in here because A is 16. If you're between B sine A and B, that means we have two solutions. What we're going to have is, if we draw our triangles, is we'll have one triangle that looks like this, angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. A will be 16. Oh, this is side C, this is side B. B will be 18, and this will be 60 degrees. And the other one will be like this. A equals 16. B equals 18, 60 degrees, and then this is side C, this is side B, and this is side angle capital C, which we want to find. So two different triangles, because either we have one sort of tilting in, or we have one sort of tilting out. So in any case, we'll have length of A being 16, we'll have measure of A being 60 degrees, and we'll have length of B being 18. We will have two different options for length of C and for these two angles. So we have to figure them out. So option one, that's this one. What do we have? Well, law of sines, right? We've got an angle and its opposite. So um, 16 over sine of 60 degrees is, 16 over sine of 60 degrees is 18.48. So there's our common ratio for these. So we'll go for, well, this kind of triangle, everything should be less than um, 90 degrees. So we'll go for, well, the only thing we can go for is B. So we know little b over sine of capital B should be equal to um, 18 over sine of B. So that should be equal to 18.48. And so here's where we get our double triangle. 18 over 18.48 equals sine of B. Inverse sine of that to get B. If you do that, you get 76.91 degrees. And here we have to keep in mind that if we're thinking about a inverse sine, if this is the sign that we want, and this is 76.91 degrees, then the other sign is 180 minus that. So the other option is B is. So the other angle is 180 minus 76.91. And that is 103.09. That's this angle. So we have two different versions from B. One where B is bigger than 90 degrees. So that's that angle, and one where B is less than um, 90 degrees, and that's this angle. So what could B 
what could angle B be? It could be either 103.09 or it could be 76.91. Great, so what's angle C? Well, there's two op options for angle C. One is that it is 16.91 degrees. And the other one is that it is 18.48 degrees. Oh, that's seeming unlikely. Oh, 43.09 degrees. Sorry about that. 43.09. So it gives me two possibilities for B. B could either be for C, C could be 16.91, or C could be 43.09. Then how do you figure out what angle C is? Well, we know what the ratio is for the sines. So in one case, C over sine of 16.91 has to equal 18.48. That tells me that little c is 5.38. Or, that's this triangle, or in this triangle, c over sine of 43.09 has to be equal to 18.48. Or c equals, if you solve that, 5.38. No, 12.62, sorry. All my notes seem to be backwards. 12.62. Okay. Great. So we've solved that triangle. And again, to classify them, right, you have to know what B sine A is, what B is, where do you fall, no solution, right triangle, two solutions, one solution. And finally, suppose A equals 12, B equals 24 and A equals 30 degrees, what kind of a situation are we in? B sine A, well, sine of 30 degrees is a half, times 24 is one half, oops, which is 12, and then B is equal to 24. So where is A on this line? A is exactly here. So, we have a right triangle. In fact, we have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So here's our picture. A, that's my right triangle B, angle C, side C, side A, side B. We know that this is 12, we know this is 24, we know C must be 60 degrees because A is 30 degrees and B is a right angle. So what's this side C? Well, in the 30, 60, 90 triangle, this side will be, if this radius, not the radius, if the hypotenuse was one, this side would be square root of three over two. But the hypotenuse is not one, it's 24. So we multiply by the hypotenuse, we get 12 square root of three. And that solves that third triangle. Okay, so in solving these kinds of triangles, we've got a side, a side and an angle. Figure out what kind of problem you have first and then solve it. Why is solving triangles important? Well, surveying is a really standard thing about um, solving triangles. So Sand Beach, for example, measures 1,200 yards. They take a sighting at each end of the beach to an oil platform, and they say, okay, well, how far is this distance and how far is that distance? So, what kind of a problem is this? This is angle, side, angle. So A is 85 degrees, right? we'll call this angle A, 
this angle B, up here is angle C, that makes this side A, this side B, this side C. And B is, angle B is 76 degrees and length C is 1200. And we wanna know what's angle C? Well, we know two of the three angles. And if you know two of the three angles, you can figure out the third angle. Right, it's 180 minus 85 minus 76, and so that's gonna be 19 degrees. So what do we know? We know 1200 over sine of 19 degrees is equal to our common ratio. For the law of sines, And that's actually equal to 3685.86. Great, so B over sine of 76 is equal to 3685.86. So B is 3685.86 times sine of 76 degrees. And that is 3576, 3576.37. And you can find the length A the same way. So that gives you B, you can find A. The oil platform is about 3,500 feet offshore. So here's three islands pictured below. You wanna sail your boat from A to C to B. Relative to north, what direction should you head to get to C? So relative to north, north is up on this. If you're starting on A and you wanna to get to C, which direction should you aim your boat? Well, north is here. So you wanna know what this angle is. But that's not an angle that's inside the triangle. But on the other hand, if you can figure out this angle, then 90 minus that will give you that angle. And same thing at C, right? Relative to north, you wanna know what this angle is, right? But this angle and this angle should add up to 180. So if you can find this angle, then you can figure out what that angle is. And then once you get to um, Island B, you just sail due west. You know the three sides. So what's the procedure for solving a three sides problem? Use the law of cosines to find the smallest angle. Right? And that would be this angle here because this is the shortest side. And once you have that, now you know this angle and you know this distance. Use law of sines to find next smallest. right, which would be that pair, right? This is six miles, then you find that angle and use subtraction. To find the third one. And so that gives us the, um, how you can find all these angles. Okay. Area formulas. So section 61 and 62, um, or 63 and 64, whatever section this is, gives us a couple of area functions. Remember that the basic area function for a triangle is one half base times height. So if we draw a standard triangle, A, A, B, 
B, B, C, C. And we'll put in H as our height. So area equals one half from this picture, C times H. But what's H equal to? As we discussed above, H is the opposite to A. And H is also the opposite to B. And so that'll be A sine B. So area of a triangle, you can write it as one half BC times sine A. You can write it as one half AC times sine B. And if you pick a different angle to drop the height from, you can get A equal to one half, what's the thing they don't have? A, B, sine C. So those are three formulas for triangles. The other one is called Heron's formula, which is pretty grim to drive, so I'm not going to. So again, referring to this triangle, the perimeter, call that P, is just the sum of the lengths. The semi-perimeter is just one half of P, it's half the perimeter, and we call that S. So Heron's formula is that area equals S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C, all inside a square root. And that's a messy der derivation, and so I'm not going to do it. But it's a useful way to get the area of a triangle if you know just the size.